Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you save preferences and auto save in Reaper. Now, saving is one of the most important things we do when using any DAW. Nothing kills the vibe of your session more than losing stuff. So it's very important you save it and have it nice and organized. So let's go through some of the best ways of saving our projects. Let's start by going to preferences. And if we go to project, there's an option right here. Prompt to save on new project. This is off by default, but if we turn it on and start a new project, it's going to ask us to save it and name it right away. But if you don't want to do that, you can leave this off and make sure you save it anytime you've recorded anything you want to keep. So let's go to save right here. We could also use the keystroke Control S on PC or Command S on Mac. And that opens up the save dialog as well. So now we want to name our song. I'll name it Song 1. I'm going to put it in my Documents folder in a folder called Songs. Now, if we go down over here, there's two options I want to turn on. Create a subdirectory for the project, which is going to create a folder for this project. That'll keep it a lot more organized. And also, copy all media into project directory. So if you already started recording, it's going to copy those items into this folder, which again, keeps everything neat and organized. So let's save it. And now if we go to our directory, we see the folder right here, song one. And if we open it up, we see our project file. Now, if we start recording, watch what happens. We'll make a new track, set the input, go into record, and record some pieces of audio. Just a few quick ones. Now, if we go back over here, you see that our folder gets kind of messy. All these audio files right here, and their peak files right here are in the same folder as our project file. To make this neater, I recommend doing this. Go to project settings, right over here. Under media, create a folder for our media. I tend to use audio, but you can name it whatever you want. Maybe it's video, or we'll just call it media. And then we could save it right here. Now let's delete this or undo it. Now let's record some more audio. Make a few files. Now if we go back to our directory, there's now a folder here called audio. And if we open it up, here are the audio files and the peak files. So it's a lot more organized to put them in a separate folder and have the project file out here in our project folder. Now, if you want to do this on every project, go back to the project settings and right down over here, after this is done, choose save as default project settings. And if we choose this, every project is going to start like this with a separate folder for our audio or our media. And it'll be in the projects folder. Now let's go back to our preferences. Down over here are the saving preferences. The first option, which is on by default, is going to save the file references with relative path names. This just makes it easier if we move our project folder to a different hard drive, it makes it easier for Reaper to find the files. And again, that's on by default. The next option, which is also on by default, is going to create a backup every time we hit save. So let's hit save. For this project, and notice over here, it created a backup called Song 1 with a backup extension. And you notice this one is newer. So this file here is what this file used to be. It creates a backup of this one and rewrites the main project file. So watch. See the timestamp on this? 
227. If I hit save again, the backup is going to change to this time. Watch. So now a backup is a 227. So it rewrites this file and creates a backup of the previous save. But the problem with this is we only have two copies. Every time we hit save, it rewrites them over here, but we only have two options, the newest save and the previous one. But we can change that with our preferences. Again, this was on by default, but we could turn these options on also. The first one is keep multiple versions. If we choose this, take a look at the backup file. It's four kilobytes. I'm gonna hit save a few times. Now it's 9K, and it keeps getting bigger every time I hit save. Because what's happening, it's creating another backup inside this file. That's why the file's getting bigger. Let's do it a few more times. So if I wanna go back to this file or revert to it, we would double click it. And now instead of opening it to the previous version, it gives us options and they're time stamped. So we could choose this one to go back to, load it, and then that version is opened up. So all of those versions are being saved in our backup file. But we could do it a different way. Go back to our preferences and turn this one off and choose this one instead. Timestamp backup. This is going to create a timestamped backup every time we hit save. But the difference from this one is that it doesn't put it in one file. It creates a new backup file each time. So let's hit save. And it created a backup file right here. Let's hit it a few more times. And it created a bunch. And if we move this out, we can see it's timestamped. So now instead of going back to our backup file, and choosing it from there, we have a separate backup file for each one. So we can double click these, and they open right up. Go back to our preferences, and let's turn this off. And there's another option over here. This is gonna create undo histories. You know when you make movements and you wanna undo them? It's gonna save those histories if we choose this. Now another option we could use is auto backup. That's over here. By default, it's set to 15 minutes, but for this demonstration, let's set it to one minute. This way we can see it working. And then we have to choose how it's saved from the options down here. Now if these options are off, which they are by default, auto backup isn't turned on. So auto backup can create a timestamp file in the project directory. So if we hit OK, you see it automatically made a backup. And now if we wait a full minute, it should create another backup file. And there it is. So now we have two backup files that were created automatically. And in this situation, it's gonna do that every minute. But we could change this. The default was 15 minutes, but I tend to use three minutes. Now we could also choose when it creates that backup. By default, it's gonna do it when it's not recording. So whenever you're not recording, after that set time, it's gonna create a backup. But we could also choose when stopped. So whenever the transport is not in play or record, only then will it create the backup or anytime. So even if you're recording or playing back, it's still gonna create that auto backup. Personally, I prefer to choose when stopped. This way it's not gonna interrupt while I'm recording or playing back, although it happens in the background. But the default is when not recording and 15 minutes. But you have to turn on one of these options down here. Now besides this option, we could also choose this one, which is gonna create a time-stamped auto backup in a separate directory and we can browse to choose where we want to put it. But I tend to use this option here, which puts the backups right in here, as you can see. Now we could also choose save to project file, 
And that's going to overwrite it right over here. It's going to overwrite this file, but that's going to happen automatically. In this situation, every 15 minutes. So it's not recommended because you don't know at what point it's going to start to save. Which brings up an interesting point. There's a big difference between auto saving and manually saving up here. When you're working, you tend to manually save or hit that keystroke at key moments. Let's say you're cutting a vocal and you're really happy with it. You're probably going to hit save then. Or you record a guitar solo. As soon as you're done, you're probably going to hit save. So it's going to create a backup at that point. Whereas using auto backups, it's at random points. It's based on time. So you're not really sure at what point in your project it's really saved. So the best way to approach it is to do both. Choose an option here, either keeping multiple versions or time stamped, and also use autosave. This way you have many different versions as backups, and the file size is pretty small, so it's worth it. But now we have options if Reaper crashes, or your computer crashes, or you lose electricity. You could always go back to a backed up version, either manually or autosaved. So I really recommend doing both. And then finally down here, you could autosave the undo history, which is what happens when you copy and paste and undo. All that history can be saved in a file or autosaved by choosing this. But most times you don't need to do that because we're autosaving the project anyway. So that's pretty much it. That's save preferences and autosave in Reaper. I hope you learned something, I hope you use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Mom.